The way that we think about a performance review is it's an opportunity to have a strategic conversation to align a colleague's performance with the ultimate contribution that they're hired to make in the organization. Welcome to Season 2 of Leadership Impact, the podcast for modern executives who are reinventing leadership within their organizations. With your host, Executive Leadership Coach and CEO of the Granger Network, Kerry Granger, and me, Paul Adams, CEO of Sound Financial Group. This season focuses on accountability, and to support you in increasing accountability in yourself and in those you lead, we're providing a special rate for our listeners who want to engage in one of our accountability courses. Text the word accountability to 555-888 for more information. This is episode 33, how to structure performance reviews that are celebrated. Welcome back to Leadership Impact. Today, we're gonna talk about how to structure performance reviews that are celebrated. Because as I understand it, as I've been doing some research, some talking to people, primarily Paul, performance reviews are not normally celebrated. Nope. So t- tell us what everybody already knows. Well, for one, anybody who's a manager, supervisor, leader is probably not looking forward to the performance reviews they have to do. But they're in a large enough corporation that knows it's important and it makes it a requirement on every manager that they need to do them. And the employees themselves, even though they know they're required, like their boss is scheduling a meeting for them, they got to show up to it. And they know that they also have to tolerate it. But when we were talking before, you mentioned that most of these reviews don't turn out to have better behavior from people anyway. But I don't remember the stat. Well, it's about feedback, really. And that's something I want to distinguish between performance feedback and performance reviews, because it's easy to get the two mixed up. But from performance feedback, yeah, a, a number of years ago, maybe five, 10 years ago, I was really into looking at the statistics around performance feedback. And I don't think humans have changed much since then. Nope. And it said 35% of performance feedback resulted in positive behavior modification, which means 65% of performance feedback resulted in neutral or negative behavior modification. And then you kind of have to wonder like, wow, what's all this advice about giving performance feedback if it doesn't seem to result in stuff? However, if you can do it well, and also if you can really create a performance review that celebrated, which is what this episode is about, but speaking about feedback, if you can do it well, it actually has enormous positive consequences. So, you know, the the importance of learning how to do this well is, is like, uh, I don't know, is statistically significant because if you don't do it well, it's not like nothing, it's negative. <laughs> and if you do it well, it's positive, yeah. And if you don't do it well, if it's not celebrated, then they also don't get done as often. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think you're right. I think people do collapse performance review and feedback as one, when as I understand it, the feedback are the things that are happening between performance reviews and the performance review. Yeah, the ideally. The review itself, yeah, is, is the separate event that's, you know, goes in a file and all of that. But why is it, what are the things that go wrong right now that have, as people are listening, because everybody's listening like, yeah, we don't enjoy it, but we do do it and we struggle through that has them not want to skip the rest of this episode. Like why, what are the things that people are currently doing so our audience can relate to that before we get to what ought to be done differently? Well, yeah, let's look at this together. I mean, one thing is they avoid it. Another thing is they don't give feedback, which is episodic, it's tactical, it's about events. They don't give feedback throughout the year. So then the performance review comes as a surprise. Mm. Or, you know, in some large corporations, I've I've seen it happen where, you know, the manager really doesn't want to do the performance review or the whole system is set up. So it's actually the employee that pretty much gives his own performance review and turns it into the manager and the manager says, okay, and here's a couple things and that's it. Mm-hmm. Performance reviews, if not well crafted, can feel like, 
you know, I'm coming in to, to hear the ultimate judgment of whether or not I'm a good or bad person almost. Mm -hmm. It's not done in partnership. It's not aligned around a more strategic purpose. Yeah, that's some of the things. I mean, what would you add, Paul? Well, I, I think a lot of it comes down to what I'm going to hear about when I go into a performance review, say it's semi-annually. I'm going to hear about everything I did wrong in the last six months. Ah, that's, that's your mindset going in. Yes. And it's because as a kid, when I went to the principal office, principal's office, I know you <laughs> got kudos when you went. I didn't get any kudos. I was getting in trouble. I was getting reprimanded. I was getting detention. And all of those things roll into the way. And what's what happens for some people is that now they go into those meetings and they're giving whoever's assessing them ultimate authority on an area of their life that takes up more than any other single area. If you're working eight, 10 hours a day for an organization, you've now spent more time with your organization than you have with your spouse. Right. That day. Yeah. And now I'm going to get assessed about all the stuff I did in the last six months that was, and there might've been some good things. But odds are they don't need my behavior change on the good things. They need it on the bad things. So that's what they've got to bring forth. And I think that most people are relating to it also that I need to go through and I'm going to give some employees kudos and I'm going to give some employees negative feedback. And yet nobody's looking forward to them from the management or from the team side, the neither the subordinate or the superior is looking forward to those conversations. Now, the question is, how do we get from one to the other because people are walking around inside this prevailing context right now and what can they do differently and I, is it a daily thing is it a weekly thing in terms of the way they prepare for those performance reviews or is it just a change in mindset yeah i think i think there's a little bit of both and i think the mindset will begin to shift both in how you frame it and just through new experiences i know in our company we have a different way of doing performance reviews. And those who get their first performance review come in anxious, unnerved, they're scared. And why? Because that's their experience up until now. And so, mm -hmm. you know, but they'll have a performance review and then they start to look forward to it. So, I mean, that's kind of weird, right? You know, people in our company look forward to it. So let me talk a little bit about the way in which we think about performance reviews. One is the performance review is different than performance feedback. So it shouldn't be, I've accumulated, and you said six months, but what I've seen is 12 months. And sometimes mm -hmm. if people haven't had a performance review in a long time because they're doing okay, then it's a lot of time in between. But it's not just an, it's not like I'm holding feedback until that one time in the year in which I can give it performance feedback ought to be happening throughout the year. So you should not be surprised at the performance review. You know, it should make sense. So performance review, I'm going to be looking way more thematically. Okay. So I'm not going to be saying this instant, that instant, the other thing that should be happening in feedback throughout the year. A performance review is, is really looking thematically across different areas of performance to pick up on themes, uh, to be able to share those themes and align on those themes. But let me back up even one more step. The way that we think about a performance review is it's an opportunity to have a strategic conversation to align a colleague's performance with the ultimate contribution that they're hired to make in the organization. Okay. Say that again. I think that yeah, was gold. It's an opportunity to have a strategic conversation to align the colleague's performance with the ultimate contribution they were hired to make in the organization. So you got to start the whole idea of performance reviews with the end in mind. What is the ultimate contribution you were hired to make in this organization? And let's talk about that. Let's get aligned on the ultimate goal to begin with. I'm then going to take a look at, you know, and does, how does that contribution line up with our greater strategy and vision? So I'm going to take the time to 
get ourselves oriented around just what we're talking about. So it's not just like, let me give you my opinion on, you know, your you performance. as a person. Yeah. <laughs> you as a person or your performance. It's for the sake of what are we even having this conversation? You know, we're having this conversation because, you know, here's where we're going as a company and here's what we're counting on you to provide. And are we aligned on that? That's the first part of the conversation. Great. Then we're going to be looking together. So I'm going to ask, you know, what are some of the things that you're paying attention to, you know, to ensure you're able to make that bigger contribution? And I'm going to listen to them and I say, okay, here are some of the things that I'm paying attention to. And I want to make sure that we're aligned on that. Then I'm going to, you know, it's going to be a conversation. How do you think you're doing in these areas? Okay, now here's what I'm seeing. You know, I agree with some of that. And here, have you thought about this? So we're really having a back and forth about alignment of what we're paying attention to and the level of performance that is being demonstrated. Why? In order to fulfill on what you're here to fulfill on. So I know I'm speaking a little bit in the abstract, but... The point is we're in a context, again, like we've talked about throughout the season, in a context of partnership to allow that colleague to perform, to meet a certain need in the organization. And so it's not a me versus them. It's not me making a final judgment if they're good or bad or something like that. It's us looking together to see where do you need to perform? Let's get aligned on that first. How are you performing? Which go back to episode three and listen to grounded assessments. And then what do you need in order to perform? So, you know, I remember having one conversation with a colleague in my company and, you know, she was doing good, really great in some areas and the areas that she wasn't doing very well in about 75% of the explanation for that is she was truly overwhelmed. She just had too much on her plate. So the result of that performance review was she ended up getting a part-time employee to help her in accomplishing her accountabilities because we were looking together on what it was going to take for her to fulfill on what she was hired to fulfill on. And that just wouldn't happen if the context was, okay, I have to do this and now it's time for me to give you my judgment on whether or not you're doing well. Mm. And and you had mentioned some different stages, first, second, third, fourth. Can you go through those again of like the actual, like I, I could see that as people typing that up as an actual agenda that they follow in their organizations for the meeting. And the first was kind of that pause ahead of time of what is it this person, which also has everybody in leadership in that part of the meeting, meeting with their colleague, which I really prefer versus my arcane language of subordinate. Uh, so there's something to take away, like relate to them as a colleague, not a subordinate. But then looking at the strategy of the company, because that could have shifted since the last performance review, here's what we're doing as a company. This is what we need this role to do now. And how does this role contribute to the overall outcomes of the organization? Yeah, getting just clear alignment on that, which it's like, what an awesome opportunity to see the contribution that, you know, you're making in service of the greater goal or the greater outcome or the greater vision. I mean, that in and of itself can be really fulfilling for people, you know, to see their part in the bigger picture. Yes. Then secondly, right? So what did you hear was the second piece? Uh, second was being able to share with them how they're doing. Ah, See, I'm going to say that's the third part. That's the okay. third one. The second one is really getting aligned then. If this is your role, what are the even the areas of performance we should be paying attention to? Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, in, you know, one of our client systems, they would give a lot of feedback on the technical aspects of a leader's job. And then they just have this big blob called leadership. 
<laughs> yes. So, so it was like, you know, do you comply with the regulations? Do you update your, you know, this, that, or the other reports? And then are you a good leader? You know, and leadership is just like such a broad category, right? So what are you, what do you even mean by that? So let's actually get aligned on what we're measuring, what we're paying attention to. So in the domain of leadership, you know, have you created a culture of accountability where the people who are reporting to you consistently make their commitments, for example, or account for their commitments? You know, so I can really, we can look at that area together and assess what you're doing. Well, maybe that's not an area you've been paying attention to. So let's even get clear on what are the areas that in general we need to be paying attention to that having some review on your performance, you know, makes sense. So number one is, you know, kind of the overarching, what are we going after? Number two is, you know, purpose of the company and and your role in it. Number two is what are we aligned on the areas of performance evaluation to begin with? You know, and this shouldn't be a surprise either. This should be part of the expectations. They should have gotten that last year. You should, you know, it should be integrated into structures. You know, I have a client who has six pillars of performance and people's performance is related to those six pillars. So it's really clear what you're going to be evaluated on. So let's even get clear, what am I getting evaluated on? And do we have alignment there? You know, and sometimes as the person providing the feedback, when I have this conversation, the colleague brings in areas that they're paying attention to that I really don't think we need to. And Mm -hmm. we get to get aligned on that. Or they bring in areas that I haven't been paying attention to. And as such, I haven't seen their great work. And I ought to be paying attention. So that's why that second phase or that second step, second stage is really important. How about third? Yeah. Then the third is what you said. Now let's assess. So, you know, in, in our performance reviews, one of the things that, you know, the structure that we use is we pay attention to truth. You know, are you speaking truth and are you a place in which people can speak the truth and there's an element of truth. Do you speak what's, you know, do you identify breakdowns or do you hide them? So there's, there's element of truth. We pay attention to accountability and there's, I don't know, seven aspects of that. There's competence and that's where a lot of the technical aspects of your job come in. And, you know, that looks different for every person. And then there's care. Do you have in mind the fundamental cares of others when performing your job. And when we get into that, it's like, do you have a fiscal care in mind? Are you fiscally, you know, paying attention? Do you have the the cares of the other uh, functions? You know, so we have an opportunity. There's a number of things that go into that. So I'm now, this third stage is how are you performing? Do we align on your level of performance. And what we do is I have my, the colleague fill out on a scale of one to five in each of the categories and sub sub areas, their rating of themselves before they show up. And then I fill it out and we start to align on their performance. So for example, in the area of truth, do you bring breakdowns up or do you hide them? Um, I remember one conversation with the person who said, you know, I feel like I'm a three. And I said, okay, good. I think you're a one. And she just looked at me. (laughs) And and I was like, you know, what, what, Jane, what happens is, you know, I'm using a fake name, right? So Mm -hmm. Jane, what happens is like, you bring them up to me, but you bring them up to me three months after it's a real blow up and a problem. I was like, in order to be a five on this is you would bring it up to me as soon as you sniff that it's a problem so that I can support you and we can actually look to a solution. And that just like opened things up for her. I said, yes, you do bring them up to me, but only after it's become such a massive mountain that it's a lot harder to dig our way out. Or in the same performance review, this is somebody who says, oh, you know, in terms of accounting for my word, I'm a, I'm probably about a... A two. And I said, really? I think you're a four. Mm. 
you know, you're, you're constantly letting me know if you can't get something done by when you can do it. And, you know, it had turned out that she was really judging herself by does she do everything that does is she get it all about. done? Right. Yeah. And so being able to have that conversation go, look, I think, you know, the way that you account for your word is remarkable. You know, so we get a chance to really align on where we think we are by her filling it out ahead of time or him and me filling it out. And then we just go bit by bit. Now, I, I think this is where a lot of employee reviews can go badly because they you, they go right to that third step. Mm -hmm. They start out like they've, they're in a large organization. They have a format for how they do this. The employee doing their side of the feedback is great. But it's those two prior steps that all have to be led by the leader and their leadership impact to be able to say, here's what I'm going to cover ahead of time. This is how this person fits into the organization. This is how it serves the mission of our team. And then giving the feedback and even for the supervisor, filling that out ahead of time in that context is a big deal because it might be somebody who's, I'm making this up, but somebody who's always five minutes late, but maybe this person in their role, it doesn't ever matter if they're five minutes late. So why would you beat them up about the thing that doesn't impact their role? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then other people, like if they're supposed to speak to a group is like, no, you need to be there five minutes early and you being on time is not acceptable. You actually have to be earlier than time for your role and here's why. And then it's all delivered in the context of where we're going as an organization. Right. So after you go through that review, now we've done step one, the managers work ahead of time, being able to be clear about how it all fits in the organization and the team. Second is producing agreement with the colleague. Alignment. About mm -hmm. Alignment. Thank you. Alignment for where you're going. Third is the review of the manager doing the performance review with their colleague and the colleague, the subordinate, having filled that out ahead of time and going back and forth, a little bit of ping pong on each of those topics. But it's all seeking the alignment. Yeah. Seeking alignment. Yeah. Which, by the way, I think it's also valuable for our audience to hear the wrestling with I'm using old language that's not going to produce new performance. Mm. So that the seeking alignment together in the interpretation of the performance. And then what's the next step? How do you? close the meeting and set it up to win both for them to win by having a celebrated chunk of feedback here, but then also having the feedback occur episodically, as you spoke about earlier. Yeah. And then I want to go back to stage three for a second. So mm. the last stage is really looking towards the future. You know, so we've had this whole conversation and, and I might ask them, you know, what, you know, what really jumped out to you in terms of what you'd like to work on or where you see your gaps, you know, thematically overall. And they'll say something like, okay, good. That, that jumped out to me. Here's how I would prioritize those given where we're going as a company. What do you think about that? So I'm, again, it's a co-creation. It's a conversation, right? And in a, in a true conversation, there's a, there's a conversion, right? So I don't expect that I'm going to think the same way after a true conversation as I do, do going in. So as the manager, I need to be willing to be converted, <laughs> to have a conversion myself, right? In the conversation. It's not just I know the right thing and, and I'm the ultimate judge. So after that conversion, that conversation, we're going to look together to see what are the most important areas of focus for development over the next year right? Or over the next period of time, over the next six months, you know, however often you do these, you know, we're going to line on that. I'm going to say, you know, what do you see in terms of what you need to grow and develop in those areas? And sometimes that's going to be personal development things. Sometimes that's going to be effort. Sometimes that's going to be organization around those areas. And sometimes like in the colleague I mentioned, they might need more resources. Like, look, I think regarding my overwhelm, you know, one of the things I can do is I can really work on my organization and really working with you to ensure that I have the right priorities. I'm not spending too much time on things I don't have to. And then ultimately, I think my job requires about 80 hours a week, mm -hmm. which is double what I'm getting paid for. And I don't want to work more than 40 hours or, you know, 50 hours or whatever. And so that last phase is is kind of having a strategy, not even kind of it is, it's having a strategy for closing the most important gaps over the next year. So you're not leaving the person with, 
a cats and dog kitchen sink bag of assessments, you're leaving them with a clear idea of where to put their focus on in, you know, moving forward. And, you know, it could be, look, you know, you do a great job as a tactical, a tactical level. And that's what we've seen. You know, you're scoring high on everything. But what I see is really missing is more strategic thinking. So, you know, I offer that as an area of development for you. And I think that that's going to allow you to really progress in this organization is to do some more to develop your capacity as a strategic thinker. And then they say, wow, that's interesting. I don't know how to do that. Okay, well, let's look to see, well, what do you, you know, how maybe we have some conversations or what about hooking up with Marcus, you know, and and asking him to mentor you in this area, or here's some books I recommend, or why don't you seek out a training? And, you know, if you can find a good training under a thousand dollars, you know, I'd be happy to invest in that. Right. So we're looking together to help them close that gap. We're coming up with a plan for the future. Well, and going back to one of our prior episodes, I noticed you also use the what, mm. not the why. Mm. And mm-hmm. and I think like just context thematically, people are relating to their performance reviews as this is going to be a dictation of past errors as mm. opposed to a conversation about future performance. Yeah, very, 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 very critical. I love what you just said. I love it. Can you say it one more time? People are relating to their performance reviews as a dictation of past transgressions, if you will, Hmm. instead of a conversation about future performance. And everybody should tweet that. That is brilliant, Paul. Thank you. Now, (laughs) if what we can do from this episode, so this is, I think about the practical. What can Mm -hmm. somebody do? So they're getting off of this call right now. What can they absolutely begin doing today? I would throw out one thing that when a colleague of yours that you're going to be doing a performance review on does those things maybe really well or not well, like open your Evernote or your note keeping program and just capture some of it in line as you go. Because you realize if it bothers you, there's probably some feedback, interim feedback you need to give them now Mm. that's different than the performance review. And that's the tactical from what you were talking about earlier, right, Carrie? Like this, Mm -hmm. the, hey, this email, you may want to send it this way instead of that way. I was CC'd on it. Thank you for that. But we need to change these ways you're communicating with our customer. Yeah, exactly. And so that when they get in stage three, when they get the rating that you gave them as a two, they're not gonna be like, what? I thought it was a five, right? They'll understand the discrepancy. And then that last, that last modality, that's not like, go, okay, so go do better. It's instead, because we didn't dictate it. And I loved your distinction of in a conversation That means you're willing to be converted, like to think differently by the end of it. And I don't think most managers go into that. They're like, hey, I'm going to finally get all this stuff off my chest. I've been holding on to and not giving you feedback on for a while. And it's normal. So there's not even a sorry about that because people relate to these performance reviews as if it's an autopsy and it's Mm -hmm. all dead and there's nothing we can do about it. And here's what went wrong. And now you go do better. But that I think is so key where that partnering comes in about here's the outcome we are all trying to produce. And here's my part in it. And this is your part in it. And let's see what we can do to converge on that, which also keeps people more engaged overall with their employer. Yeah. Because now they have an opportunity to have a shared future together, not a shared set of experiences about this past that they've lived together. The one last thing I'm thinking about is how often I bet, you know, they say people don't leave companies, they leave leaders, they leave managers. And how often people may feel like just because the accumulated performance reviews is like, I am never going to get outside the box of how I've been assessed in my organization. In part, because nobody's talking about the future. Mm -hmm. And then what it's not, it's what you can do differently in your job, not here's what we're doing as an organization, because I'm willing to bet in these types of reviews, carries, I bet you've found periodically somebody says, well, I'm kind of not great at this, but I could make a big difference over here if we could let loose my talents in this domain. And they end up with a new role in the org chart mm-hmm. because they have, a, and, the, and the manager has a chance to be converted to that point of view also because it's an actual conversation, mm-hmm. not a dictation of here's how you did. Because I, I promise probably the first couple times you do this, 
even if you do it well the first time, you're going to have a couple times that people are more filling out their assessment of themselves as what is what are they going to think? Yeah. Because they're trying to avoid being wrong in the meeting as opposed right. to having a better future in the company. Yeah. And this is something, you know, it does require a level of trust to be vulnerable and authentic and say, you know, I really feel like I'm this, right? So if you remember in the very beginning of this season, we talked about accountability in the context of accomplishing a future, you know, a future mm -hmm. we care about. And we talked about throughout the season, accountability in the context of partnership. Well, partnership for what? For the future we care about, right? You know, it will take a little bit of trust to get in there, to be authentic, to be vulnerable. And if you're inside the context of we're accomplishing a shared future and we're going about it, you know, and, and we're partners in that, which is what this whole season has been about, putting accountability in those two lenses, then you might find yourself taking more risks as uh, the colleague receiving the performance review or the colleague presenting the performance review. Because it's not, do I agree or disagree with your assessment about me, but how do we need to orient and equip ourselves for that future? You know, to include, look, in this future, I also see myself moving into a director role or, you know, what's important to me at this time is that, you know, I've been with this company for five years and I feel like I've done a pretty good job and I'd like to, you know, eventually become a, uh, you know, a COO, for example, and I don't know if I see that in the future. So, you know, that that's an important future based conversation. And if we're in partnership, I'm not as scared. But I also want to say that in some companies, you're going to say that sounds like ideal fantasy land and my company couldn't be further from that environment. And let's just say baby steps. Yeah, that's it. Well, and if you're in that environment, maybe you have somebody in leadership above you, a director level, and and here you are, you're going to try to institute this new way of thinking inside of your team. It's not massively complicated. It just takes a little bit of time ahead of time, figuring out the organization overall, where it's going, where that team and the specific employee you're going to be doing the review with contributes to that, getting clear on that. I might suggest writing a paragraph about it for yourself, just for your own notes to get in the mindset which will help your mood of going into the meeting, which will put you in the position that you can go, okay, here is where this person can contribute to that future and kick off the conversation with building alignment around their role in that future. Third is gonna be getting through your assessment of where they're at performance-wise on the granular and theirs. And that's the work that you've both done prior. And then fourth is where you partner in the future. And that might be the stage where you give people the news about here's what you qualified for as a raise or here's what the, you know, what the, the pay scale looks like for your role and how you're going to close the distance on that or how I can help position you for another promotion, et cetera. Or as some managers, like this is where I'm going the organization and I want you to be with me, which is why we need to get these things done. So really imbue your organization with that future mindset of you guys traveling together towards some set future that that the corporation, the organization is after, that too often these reviews end up totally in a vacuum compared to that. And it's just, how are you doing as a human being? And we all know we identify deeply with our work. It's where we spend a lot of time. And if you can have people be celebrating the feedback that they get because they know it leads to a better future for them because that's how you produce the context, everything can change in your organization. Those baby steps might mean a complete change in the way your organization looks at performance feedback. Carrie, anything else you want our listeners left with? You know, just one tiny thing as I listen to you summarize, you know, having a great performance review that's celebrated does require preparation. And too many times we just wing it or we think it'll all come to us, but, you know, do everyone a favor provide the respect that that person in this time set aside deserves and do your preparation. I think that is well said, Carrie, and we will end on that note. And everyone out there, we just hope each of these episodes ends up as something you can do this week, this month with your team, building your future as an organization. And as always, we hope this has been a contribution to your leadership impact. 
Thank you for tuning into Leadership Impact, the podcast for modern executives who are reinventing leadership within their organizations. Subscribe now at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. And to support you in your leadership impact, we've offered a special course rate to you, our listeners. Just text the word accountability to 555-888 and you'll receive the link. Learn more at grangernetwork.com and join us next week on how to transform your leadership impact with accountability.